High performing teams, they've been talked about for years. In fact, Forbes, Harvard Business Review, and McKinsey all agree high performing teams are great. But let's talk about high performing teams today and get from the why and the what to the how, coming up next on Project Skills Mentor. Hi, I'm Liz, the Project Skills Mentor, and today we're all about high performing teams. Let's look at some of the reasons why high performing teams are so important. Data has shown that high performing teams create an 87% better retention of your staff. People who are happy at work will stay, thus reducing costs of onboarding and training people. It also creates a 57% higher effective team. That means coming in on budget and on deliverable. But there's one other bottom line point about high performing teams, and that is that they are 2.3 times higher in revenue growth. They contribute to the bottom line more than others. That is a compelling case for a high performing team. So how do you think about high performing teams? Let me tell you what I think. There's an art and a science to it. The art is understanding the people side of the project because people are in every single kind of project, no matter what it is. And the other side is the science, the process approach clarity. Those are both really equally important. So let's start by looking at some of the data in the market and then how my workbook gets to that point about how to create a high performing team. There's been a lot of work done by Harvard Business Review and this chart I found especially compelling. It links high performing teams to diversity and to psychological safety. And in this study done by Google, where they initially thought high performing teams were just a whole bunch of star performers lumped into a team and set off to do an activity. Well, they found that actually doesn't work and that's also something found by a lot of companies. What they did find was this information. They found five things that were incredibly important to creating a high performing team. And again, Psychological safety topped the chart. Also dependability, having each other's backs, structure and clarity, understanding how the project worked and how the team works together. Meaning, finding the purpose for themselves in the project. An impact, is this a project that matters? So today I wanna to take you through my list of five, which is echoing a lot of the studies I found and talk about the how component. And at the end, you'll see in my workbook, I've given you some detailed ideas on how you can get started with your team, whether you're leading a team, managing a team, managing a department, or just wanna be a better leader. So let's start working through the workbook. I'm gonna talk about concepts. We're gonna talk about some homework that you need to do to figure out what makes your team optimum high performing in the how process and then some lessons learned. I've taken the sum of all of my research and boiled it down to five aspects, purpose, people, plan, performance, and profit. I find this summarizes the different kinds of aspects of how that I found in all of the surveys that I looked at. We've talked about some of these. So purpose is understanding the greater purpose. People is understanding how the people can be optimized to be their best. Plan is the clarity component, having a plan. Performance is how you'll show performance in the team and also profit. And here I'm talking about the individual. How do they profit from being a member of the team? So in purpose, I like to use visuals. And one of the things I like to work on with the team is how will each team or group of team members contribute toward the whole? So if you have a project that is, you know, building an app or building a customer service system, you'll want to take each component or each team, depending on how you break up the project, and help them storyboard it. Help them define how they can very simply see the outcome, see their performance and how it relates to that outcome. So that links purpose to their performance. So right away out the gate, you're linking and letting people find their own value in that performance of work that links to an outcome they can be proud of. The next part is people, and people are complicated, so this part has a few moving parts. First, it's understanding your goals for the team. That's important. Starting with that in mind helps you understand where you wanna go with the team, what you want to do to help optimize the team. Next is understanding each individual's focus on what makes them happy. Is it a higher salary, a chance for promotion, more time with their family, or something else? Everyone has a list of things that they consider to be the most important. Next, you need to consider the culture, the culture you're in. What kind of culture is it? And does your project have a different culture? So your organization may have a culture, 
your department may have a culture, and your team, your project, or your small group may have a culture of their own. It might be based on all the diversity, people, and places that people are at. Maybe you're dealing with a remote versus hybrid team, which creates another culture. And maybe you're dealing with a monolithic culture, but in fact, it's not really. Maybe they're all from the same place, but the fact is you've got functional people and technical people. And that goes to the last part, which kind of relies on the concept of Belbin roles, although I've simplified it for my documentation that you'll find in the workbook. That's going to be understanding how people like to work, how they process information, how they learn, how they solve problems. Are they doers, thinkers, or people people? In other words, do they solve problems through a workshop? Maybe they're a people person. Do they read a book and deliberate internally? Then they're a thinker. Or do they like to prototype until something works? Maybe they're action-oriented. All of this is your people component. Next, you're going to want to talk about way of working. And in past examples, I've said, you know, the project manager can deliver this from the combination of the project charter and the business case. But I've come to understand that way of working doesn't really work. And in fact, in 1994, I was writing projects where we understood this. So it's really about coming together as a team and understanding these components and working them out together. And are there constraints set out that companies will dictate to, to project managers and teams? Yes, that's true too. But where you have any kind of wiggle room, when you have the ability to decide your how, give that back to the team and let them decide it together. It doesn't mean everyone will be happy because you'll have to land on a particular way of doing things, but it does mean that people all have a say, and that's the power of coming together. You'll feel people have your back if they felt listened to during this process. And from this process, you can move on to the RACI diagram. People will understand their role, who understand that outcome we talked about earlier, can also understand how they participate in each of the main components of work to be done. Next, talk about how you're going to measure your project, how you're going to oversee it, and how you're going to manage performance. People like transparency. If they're going to work really hard and put their heart and soul into something, they want to know how is it going to be measured. Both the overall team to the organization and individually to the team. So be clear. Be clear about how you're going to map workload and work structure. And here I have an example of how I would do a weekly report to show what we're doing, what's next, what needs help, but also the KPIs I'm going to present. I'm going to present to the organization, to the steering committee, and others, even to the team members themselves. What are we measuring ourselves against, and how are we doing against those measurements? And last, understanding how people are going to be measured, and that it's an evil playing field, and everyone's measured against the same basic criteria, no matter what their job, is important to show. Now, this may be based on how your company works, but in fact, even if it is, you should be transparent about it, especially if you have a group of people who are really diverse, maybe some coming from the internal company, some coming from externally, and some subject matter experts who are just sort of consulting. It's still nice to have that equal playing field and understand how people are going to be valued and measured on the project. And when it comes to profit, we have to link the human components of goals for the team. What do they as human beings want to see? And then where's the profit in it for them? So again, I mentioned profit here, which might make people think about uh, P&L and investment earnings for a company. I don't mean that. I mean the profitability to the participants of the project. So here we're talking about what kind of profitability can help the team raise up, become that high-performing team. Is it outcome-oriented focus? Is it being more creative, being able to use some of their skills to try something new with new curiosity, with a low threshold for failure? They're not going to get beaten up or dinged if they fail at trying something new. Is it a teaming moment? Is it really having a strong sense of team? Is it the ability for the team to kind of do things their own way, some autonomy in how the how works on the project in the details? Either way, again, having a sense of how you're going to track team performance and individual performance so that people kind of understand, if I do well, here's the possible outcomes for me. Here's how I'll be measured. Here's the literal measurement model we'll be using. And here's how we'll test to make sure that there's parity. You know, there's so much built-in bias to so many systems where high performers, especially if they're people of color or women, still aren't given the same kind of outcomes as maybe white men. 
If that's the case, look at your data to make sure that you actually are equaling the playing field. Now here's your homework. The first thing I want to take you through is my Meet the Team document. And I have a whole document on how to onboard your team members using this Meet the Team concept. And I'll put a link to that video here. Finding out by asking the people what's important to you, what frustrates you, what makes you inspired, what gives you the motivation to do the work that you do, what kind of work do you like to do, what is the best way for you to do that work, how do you want to play a part in the team? How do you see yourself? What do you see as your impact? What do you want to be famous for or known for? These are the kinds of questions that can really help people come to claim ownership of their engagement in the team. And that's powerful. That's more powerful than anything a project manager can do or say. Letting people come to the table on their own terms by sharing their personal story about their way of working. Everyone on the team does this. The project manager is simply the facilitator to the discussion. And here's where psychological safety steps in because when this is done, every answer is allowed. Otherwise, there is no psychological safety if I feel like I'm going to say something that others will judge. Next, we're going to do that plan on a page. This concept of defining the work of the project through a small storyboard. An idea about we have a technical thing to do, a functional thing to do, and a business thing to do. Let's storyboard what that looks like and make sure that the outcomes all work together. And again, working as a team to go over the way of working of the project. How the project will work is incredibly critical for the whole team to build. So if you can, let the team build as much as possible together. Now, if there are constraints and company ways of working that have to be considered, Tell them that up front. This isn't a democracy always, but where you can make it a democracy, you'll see the results in your performance. In my workbook, I have two other sections that I want to highlight. One is coaching. So I do a lot of mentoring and I'll put my link to my mentoring playlist here where you can download all the information on mentoring. But I also want to focus on the aspect of coaching. And I have a video on coaching versus mentoring if you're interested in checking that out. You need to figure out with the individuals on your team who should coach them, what should they coach them on, and how do they want to be coached. And this is a couple of documents that can help very quickly identify that. Everyone has a SWOT analysis, everyone has goals, and everyone has challenges. This is what you're going to document on page one. On page two, you're going to make your team learning plan or your team results plan, whatever you want to call it. But essentially, it's how you go down the path of coaching so that one or more people can realize their full potential. Coaching is a great part of learning on the job. So please don't leave this point out of your overall high performing team planning. And next, we have notes and lessons learned. Every manager, every project manager, every leader needs to understand how this concise way of working, this action-based process of creating a high-performing team relates to them. It needs to work for you. It needs to make sense for you and you should make changes to this workbook so that you can make it your own. Whatever way you want to do that, you can download the PDF and then update it into a system where you can actually make changes. I'm okay with that. The most important thing is that it's meaningful to you. If you feel like you really want to get to grips with this mentoring point because that's an important point for your team, then check out this video. And if you want to know more about what makes teams great, check out this video. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you did, consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time on ProjectSkillsMentor.com. Bye-bye, everybody.